Oh, my parents took my brother, my sister, and I to every weekend. We went on some trip in the city yeah. to visit some cultural institution or some some place where grown-ups are exhibiting expertise in some way or another. So we went to the zoo, we went to the art museum to see the works of the great artists. We'd go to the opera, we'd go to the symphony, we'd go to the natural history museum, we went to the planetarium. And that was just one of the trips. And I happened to be struck by that, starstruck by that trip. My brother ended up as an artist and he was taken by the visits to the art museum. My sister is a sellout, she went into business. <laughs> So, were you born in? Born and raised in, in New York City. Right. So Specifically you're... born in Manhattan, but that's just where the hospital was. I was, I was a resident of the Bronx, New York. And were your parents uh, American? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm second generation. So, you're just second generation? American. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And did they have any interest in science? Nope. How... So, this just happened? I said it happened. You just read the transcript. I said, I'm in the planetarium. <laughs> the, scar, the stars hit me. And right. you're asking me, what other forces? That's the force. That's the force. The universe called me. My uncle didn't call me. My, nobody else called me. The universe called me. So what are you asking for? Well, I already because, answered the question before you because, asked it. Because Natalie Angier in the canon quotes Peter Gallison, a historian of science, and they talk about the fact that what happens is that kids get taken to museums, science fairs, science festivals, planetaria, right? And they get turned on to science. And then they get taught science in schools. And you manage to take these bright little objects that are full of inquisitiveness and make them bored. And what happens after the age of about 12 is their parents go and buy them a membership card for the Museum of Contemporary Art and they stop going to those things anyway and they don't bother more with the science. That was their argument anyway. That there's an actually a reservoir of people out there if they were getting better scientific information beyond the museums could actually be not only turned on to science, but stay turned on to science. So how did you end up staying turned on to science? I would take issue with that interpretation of the data. Okay. I would say in my life experience, it's not that bringing kids to a museum, taking kids to a museum, m makes them interested in science. That's my, let me say it differently. The goal here is not to make everybody a scientist. That's not the goal. What a boring world that would be. You want artists, you want musicians, you want novelists, poets, comedians, actors. You want, you want the rest of this. What matters is whether they're scientifically literate and maintain that literacy and that curiosity throughout their lives, in no, no matter what becomes their profession. Kids are born scientists. You don't have to turn them on to investigating the world around them, they do that coming out of the womb. Kids turn over rocks and poke at the millipedes. They, they pick apart flowers. They, they bang on pots and pans. They, they will do things that are experiments in the world around them. And so the challenge is not getting kids interested in exploring the world around them. The challenge is staying out of their way. That's the challenge for the adult. How many parents do you know when the kid drags the pots and pans out of the cabinet? How, that, how many of them say, stop doing that, you're making a racket and you're getting the, the dishes and pots dirty, put them back. They just squashed an entire experiment in acoustics. At least that's how I look at it. That's the kids exploring. So the, less, the trick is to get out of their way. And people do become scientists even when they have boring science teachers. It, those, I think, are kids who never lost their curiosity for nature. And you're right, there's some classes where it gets squashed. They, the, the enthusiasm is drummed out of them. So you got to put in some ways to keep it going. I don't have a problem with that. You put in some ways, and we would continue to go back to the museum. I took classes at the Hayden Planetarium later on. I was a member of the Amateur Astronomers, Astronomers Association of New York. I had a telescope. We went to meetings, went to star parties. So I had ways to sustain it. And they were all sort of self-driven because I had the interest cast upon me by the universe when I was nine years old. So maybe the question here is, how strong is that level of curiosity? Because it needs to be strong enough to resist the forces that might try to squash it. Maybe that's really what this should be about. Well, I was also thinking about... You, you need the, the, sort of the rejuvenation wells to draw from.